What's up guys, Crisis Revolution here, and today I'm back with another episode of the Photoshop Touch Tutorial Series, guys, and yes, I am back with YouTube, sorry about my absence, uh, I will probably have a channel update video out in the next couple of days explaining it, if you follow me on Twitter, you should know what happened, something really bad happened. But, um, you'll hear it all in the vlog, or not the vlog, it's the update video, whatever. But anyway, guys, for this third episode of Photoshop Touch Tutorial Series, I'm going to be going over custom text. Now, this was, um, mentioned, or not mentioned, suggested by me by MC Basher 1324 so thank you to him. I'll have a link to his Twitter in the description below, if I remember, because you all know I'm bad at that. But guys, I'm going to be going over custom texts and how to make them, and squiggly lines everywhere, I don't care. But first off, guys, I will have an example of a custom text on the screen right now, so you guys can see what exactly I'm going to do this, because under my, circum my circumstances or not, I don't have an example to put on the screen that will still be explained in the channel update, but whatever. So guys, what you're going to do to get your that kind of custom text is you're going to get your app Fonto. This is a free app on the App Store, it's just spelled like this, P-H-O-N-T-O, -O, and it's awesome. There's a ton of tutorials on how to install fonts. I might link that in the description below too. Anyway, you're just going to go go on the Fonto, hit plain image, hit the white, and set it to the highest one, which is iPad slash iPad mini. If you're on an iPhone or iPod touch, do that. But I'm on an iPad mini, so I'm going to go to 2730 by 2048. Now, th since it's such a big file size, guys, this is going to be like this. And on Photoshop, it's going to lag pretty bad. But if you just save often, it won't crash. So now that I have my white template, guys, let me click on it, add text, and hit font. So I'm just going to go in here and choose whatever font I want. Uh, let's see, what's something cool I could use? And I'm just going to tell you this right now, I'm on my brother's iPad, and again, this was all going to be explained in the video, so just don't worry about that. But I'm just going to choose this font, and I'm just going to type, I don't know, crisis. That's a simple word. And you're just going to make it as big as you can get it. That way you have the max amount of pixels to use up so it has better resolution. Now you're going to go to style and make it white. And I know you can't see it, you can faintly see it, but that's all going to be fixed. You're going to go to stroke next and turn it all the way up like that and set it however fat you want. I suggest just one because then you, you can change your stroke in Photoshop or whatever. So now you guys, I just see, now you see I have an outline of my text. So I'm just going to go down here to the export button and as soon as it goes I'm going to hit save image. So let this load for a second, and it's saved. Now we're going to, don't, no, I'm not rating. We're going to go back into Photoshop, guys, and this is where the exciting part begins. You guys can create this own cool custom text for all your thumbnails, profile pictures, banners, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to go to the add photo button right down here. This way it stays the same resolution, and apparently it didn't save. Let me just go back. Uh, try it again. I don't know, it always does these little buggy things. Let me go to that camera roll and just do it here. No. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. I don't know why it's down there, but we'll take it. And add photo. So let's go. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And here we go, guys. So now we have the, uh, the crisis text on here. See, as I zoom in, you can see it's really good resolution. So that's going to look great. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just go into here, my magic wand, hit this little plus button in the corner, right there. That way you can select multiple areas. This is great with text that have like little insides, like the R. I can just click on the inside of the R, and it selects that as well. So now I'm just going to go up to the pencil and hit clear. So now all I have is the text left. Now, in order to get that kind of shadowy thing in the middle, you're going to go to the plus thing and hit duplicate layer. Then you're going to add the plus sign, or no, not duplicate layer, I'm so stupid guys. You're going to go up and hit empty layer. So now you just have a layer with nothing in it. You're going to go back down to the bottom layer, go up here, hit select pixels, so it selects all around it. Then you're going to go to the empty layer, hit the end button, fill in stroke, go to stroke, and make it whatever color you want your stroke to be. I'm going to use black, just because uh, it's kind of pretty generic, and that's what a lot of people use. So now guys, as you can see on the bottom layer down here, I just have my text, and on the top layer I have a duplicate of the um, the stroke on it. So now what I'm going to do is go to the outside, 
And it's going to be the same thing as like we were cropping it out when we were filling it in. So I'm going to select the outside and the inside of the R. And I'm going to go here and fill. Now you want this, not fill and stroke, my bad. Now you want this, when you fill it, see it's going to be black. You want to change the color to something other. I suggest white, just because it's a contrast, and it's going to work really well. So now on this layer, as you can see, the only transparent pixels are inside, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to go to FX and Glow. And as you can see, it's going to glow on the inside. And guys, doesn't that look amazing? If we add it to black, it's going to look like a giant shadow as soon as it loads. Doesn't that look awesome, guys? So that looks great. You can use this for tons of things. But I am not done yet. So now as you have the glow on the inside, you're going to go back and select all the white areas you just created. Because that was just kind of a thing we needed. We didn't really need it permanently. Just kind of a temporary template thing. And then you're just going to hit the clear button again. So now as you can see guys, we have the text with the um, the shadow inside of it, which looks awesome. Now, next thing we're going to do is hit the plus button, and I, I am on my brother's iPad, so I don't know where all his photos are and stuff. So let me just uh, see if I can find something we can use as a texture. Let's see. Uh, maybe just in his photos. We can use this. This is cool. So um, we're going to take this. It looks like kind of a water thing. I don't know. And we're just going to scale it up to the text size. There we go. So now it covers the entire screen or most of it. I don't know if I did it perfectly or not. We're going to go down to this layer and hit the plus button. Hit that and merge down. So now those two layers are kind of connected. Then we're going to go to select pixels and hopefully it selects them. Yes, you can see that outline. And now this is how you like do masking, if you know what I'm talking about. Where that's basically where you take a big picture and change it to the exact size of, a, of another thing. So you just go into that layer, hit up here, hit select pixels, and you're going to go back to the top layer, hit the pencil, and hit extract. So now as you can see, we have that in the exact same shape. Now I, you may notice, crisis, where is the shadow? Well, this is how you fix it, guys. You're going to go to the paper, turn the opacity down, and look at that. That looks so pretty, doesn't it? Now, if you want to add a little color to it, go down to your white um, to font, to type, whatever. I just lost my train of thought there, guys. I'm just going to hit the magic wand, have the plus, and just select inside of the letters. No, uh, that's not going to work, actually. I'm stupid. I'm just going to go back to empty layer. and Or not empty layer. We're going to take this layer. Uh oh what did I just do? Oh, it doesn't matter. We're going to go back to this stone layer and duplicate it. So if it works right there, there we go. Then we're just going to up here, fill and stroke. And it's going to be on fill, and you're going to fill with whatever color you want. You get some yellow here. Or wait, why is it doing that? Oh, yeah, we got to select. My bad, we got to select the pixels, or else it's going to try to fill in the entire photo. But now I selected the pixels, and as you can see, I didn't change colors. It is kind of faint, guys. That's because we have the other layer under it but don't worry I can that's easy to fix maybe I'll just choose this uh, maybe a red or nah I'm a blue guy I'm gonna go with some blue here Put the, see and once you change it back it has this awesome color texture and I'm just gonna go here and merge or actually see the opacity is down if I turn it up boom looks awesome so uh, I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit more like really low there guys and now if I just go up here and merge visible layers, let's do this. Now I can just maybe add a drop shadow in the background. And there we go, guys. You have an awesome custom text that you made yourself on Photoshop Touch. So guys, if you did enjoy this video, this Photoshop Touch Tutorial Series Episode 3, please leave a like and possibly subscribe for more Pocket Edition news, updates, gameplay, and more. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.